Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got news of Dogecoin potentially being mentioned by Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live. We've also got a lot more news on Ethereum and how the narrative has now shifted to Ethereum and the whole DeFi layer 2 space is getting a lot of attention. So we're going to check that out on the charts as well. Plus, I want to talk about what my plan is moving forward from here, especially as Bitcoin is just not passing that $58,000 level, in particular the $60,500 level that we've been looking for. So let's start off with the market caps, the news, dive into the charts. If you love the sound of that, you guys know what to do. Hit the like button down below, bell notification icon after you've hit the subscribe button so you can get here before the scammers arrive and enjoy the comment section together. All right, let's dive in to the news. The market cap is at $2.2 trillion with Bitcoin still sitting at $1 trillion. Ethereum is closing in now. We're about a third of the market cap of Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin not passing this 58,000, and you know if you've been following the channel, in particular, I'm looking for the $60,500 level, and I'll look at that in the chart and explain why in a moment. But with Bitcoin just holding up at this level after the scare of the last few weeks, I suspect that some new investors might get shaky feet. They might get a little bit scared that their investment isn't moving anywhere. And this could also affect investors over the last one to two months where their investment basically hasn't moved at all and you're seeing big gains elsewhere in coins like dogecoin and other cryptos in the top 20 and so people could get shaky feet and decide to leave these cryptocurrencies it's just a theory let's see what happens and i'm going to check the charts in the, in a moment ethereum has punched to new all-time highs yet again now this is on its way to the the well, the first target of $3,000 and my um, my next target of $3,500, which we've talked about on the channel as well. Binance is hitting all-time highs again or getting very close to it. XRP still holding out in the top five. Dogecoin still in front of Cardano, Polkadot, Uniswap, Litecoin, and Chainlink. You know that I skip Bitcoin Cash because I don't believe this is going to be a great long-term investment. I think some of these others are going to do a lot better. Bitcoin Cash is still holding its ground because it just, for new people anyway, it just seems like a cheaper Bitcoin. But in fact, they're two very different projects. Let's take a look at what I've got on Twitter first. Thanks for joining me on Twitter as well. There's a link in the description. You guys know now that I'm posting a lot of news over here. Uh, requests. If you guys have requests for coins that you want to look at, go over already. I've just put this up 50 minutes ago. 100 requests of different cryptos that people want me to uh, review on the channel. And that'll be done on tomorrow's video. So top three, go and do that. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. And I've got a lot of news that I research when it comes to different projects that are popping off. So check that out as well. Now for the fear and greed, we're at 66. We haven't moved too far from yesterday. We've just gone back a little bit. Last week was still the deep depression of the fear uh, since Bitcoin crashed. And basically from here, I think it's just going to keep holding out in this area until Bitcoin does something. If Bitcoin just loses volatility and we don't get too big of a move either way up or down then i think we're going to be pretty safe in this sort of neutral to slightly fearful to slightly greedy area this article is about uh, a wall street giants playing the make bitcoin cheaper game again it's possible i don't see the news out there just yet but if there is some slight fall in bitcoin or something that's not working too well you can bet your bottom dollar that you'll see these guys back out in the news saying how bad bitcoin is so they can drop the price it doesn't matter to them whether they are bashing it or promoting it all that matters to them is that they're making money off the fees for from their clients for holding bitcoin or uh, producing bitcoin products for them so it, i don't think it really matters at all for these guys here it's just do whatever is going to help them uh, for their bottom dollar. So the bear case for Bitcoin is Ethereum. So it's old mate Crypto Cobain from Twitter. This is something that I've been talking about as well. So I'm basically bringing this up because other people also have this idea. Talking about Ethereum will inevitably flip Bitcoin's market cap if temporarily. And uh, basically he's just going on to say that if it happens for a sustained period of time, then that could affect Bitcoin's gains. I haven't looked at it in, in that view. I just thought, over time, Bitcoin or Ethereum is going to flip Bitcoin. This is one of the main reasons here. Bitcoin's addressable market cap as a gold substitute is around $10 trillion, while Ethereum's addressable market cap is 
everything. And so Bitcoin is kind of capped in that sense if people are still comparing it to the physical world, whereas Ethereum doesn't really have a cap on it. And, and like we can see with crypto projects, the sky's the limit. If you can believe something is worth $100,000, it'll be worth $100,000 at some point. Just like Doge, there is just, there's nothing to it except a bit of fun. Here's how Bitcoin and Ethereum will perform for the rest of the year, according to our good mate, Raul Pal. And the main little section out of this is the returns. Bitcoin has returned 96% so far. Uh, I believe they're looking at it in terms of the beginning of 2021. And Ethereum's at 275%. Compare that to the rest of the traditional markets, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, oil, gold, copper, wheat, US dollar index, 1%. Wow. Lumber, which is sort of the big thing as well. That's That went a little bit crazy over Twitter. But the commodities are also going up and people believe that is part due to the inflation of our currency, or well, at least the world currency being the US dollar. XRP has dropped 4% as Ripple releases 1.6 billion from escrow. Basically, that is 1 billion tokens. So they have, uh, there's 55% total supply, 100 billion tokens. They've just released another billion of those. So although small, it's still a billion bucks that you've got to find to support or find the demand to support the supply that's now come onto the market. Ripple Labs unlocked 1 billion XRP, just shy of 1.6 billion from its escrow wallet today, according to Whale Alerts. So it's affected the price slightly hasn't affected it that much. I think there's just that much interest in Ripple XRP, I should say, at the moment. Now on to Dogecoin, the news that every Dogecoin lover has been waiting for. Saturday Night Live, Elon Musk, Doge father, people are asking, well, Elon Musk asks, throw me some skit ideas for Saturday Night Live. What should I do? And we've got a tweet here, the Doge father, do the Doge father. So the, following that, uh, Elon Musk has also talked about being, doing the Doge Father. He's tweeted on Wednesday, Musk tweeted the Doge Father Saturday Night Live May 8th. So I think a lot of people are now waiting for May 8th. First, we had the 24, well, I mean, we call it 24 here in Australia and I guess the rest of the world, whereas the US calls it 420, April 20th. Well, they were waiting on that date for something to happen on Dogecoin. Dogecoin fell. Let's see what happens on May 8th. Now that we have a date for it, I assume people probably buy up into it. And that is what we have seen on the chart. Seeing that it was Wednesday of last week being around the 28th of May. This is where the tweet came out. So you can definitely see that there was a lot of buying action on the 20th. Volume was higher this day here, which was yesterday. A lot lower volume, but it's still increasing. Now, the main issue here is that it's not getting to the old all-time highs. And that is a weakening signal. So this is the previous all-time high on the 16th of April. Everyone waiting for the 20th of April. 20th of April produced a massive down bar. It just reversed the whole day, losing people at least 22% from the close of the previous day to the close of the 20th. Otherwise, if people were buying the top, there's the bottom. It's a full bar day of 42%. So if you were sitting in it for 24 hours, you would have that fluctuation of around 42% in your portfolio. Now, if you're not interested in Dogecoin, it's just important to remember these things regardless of what you're trading because this is the reality of cryptocurrency. Now, it's started to climb again. And what I have noted with each of these moves of Dogecoin is that the moves are getting a little less and less. So this move was still massive. This is from when we, we burst out in April into that, well, the news was supposed to be of the 20th, but of course it fell before then. So a few days up and there were still massive gains, 500 or more percent if you bought a little lower at around five or six cents. 500 percent is pretty sweet in a few days. But if you're taking a look at the previous gains, just in a few days yet again, that is 1400 percent. It's massive. And the risk was so much lower at that point in time. So the main thing to note here is that as the market continues to increase, the risk gets exponentially worse and well, it gets exponentially higher and the uh, rewards get smaller. So you've got less rewards here, far more risk because you're already playing well above the old lows and the old support levels. And now we're doing the same thing again. So the, the reward here or what people are trying to get out of this is a dollar. 
trying to make a dollar from Dogecoin. So from this point to a dollar, about 170%. It's not saying it's going to get there. For it to get there, Dogecoin now needs to get above a hundred billion dollar market cap, which would make it flip Tether, XRP, Binance to get it into the top three. So I, oh look, it's not impossible. It's very possible, especially with how much of a household name Dogecoin is. But again, just the risk to reward. It's not my cup of tea. Now, if you are wanting to play that game, definitely look for some levels of support and resistance. And I'm definitely looking at the 50% again. So this was the level that we're looking at. It's spiked. This was last time. We knew this was happening, talked about it in the videos. It's not that hard to tell. You don't need to be too smart to see that sort of thing happen. It spiked down to test some old levels. It didn't get that far and it's bounced straight back and it has been t uh, playing around the 50% level. This has been on the chart ever since this top came in. You guys can check it out on all the videos. That's just a simple FIB extension. So Dogecoin, just keep an eye on any stop areas if you want to play that game and just reduce your risk. That's essentially the game that I'd be looking at there. Let's look at uh, Bitcoin and then also Ethereum. And Bitcoin's at 56,000. So this is, let me take these lines off. This was the top that we we're looking for, at least breaking the 56K and it has done that, but the volume is just not there. It has really petered out. Look, it is the weekend, so that tends to be what happens on weekends as well, where the volume just starts to dry up, uh, dry up a little bit. The main point here that I'm looking at is this range that we saw from the low to the top, and then the next range is only about 61% of that previous range. And that's okay for now. We just want to make sure that this low doesn't get broken. So that low is at $52,380. That's pretty much the level there where I would be more concerned about my trade if I was looking to put a trade on at this point. For me, I'm still waiting for the 60,500 to be broken. That's what I said at the beginning of the video. Reason for that is this is the major scare bar which was on the 18th. So that was the big crash day and the mood changed in the market. So for us to get out of this bearish mood, I'd wanna see that top broken which is at you can see here it's 60,433. So it's around number 60 and a half thousand. We get above that, close, then this market is looking a lot stronger. There, like we said in yesterday's video, it's already broken through the 56K. So that's one good sign. We've hit some resistance. We're coming back to sitting on some support. This is the micro scale. So I'm not overly that uh, like strong about it. I'm just waiting to see a better result. And the distance between all of these levels is not that much. You know, I only have to wait another, call it 8% for me to get confirmation that we're in a sustained bull market again. And I'm just not confident in it because of the lowering volume and the smaller ranges and the less time that we've seen going up. We've only gone up one, two days, whereas out of the low, we went up three days. And so the ranges are reducing in time and in price, and that's usually a bearish sign. But Let's see what happens over the next couple of days because this could just bounce around here, build up some support and then take off. The main thing I'm talking about here is that there is time in this move. Should this happen to burst out and take out the 60,000? Great, we haven't lost much time and we haven't lost much of the gain in terms of a percentage move. So either way, I'm, I feel safer sitting on the sideline and just watching this one out on Bitcoin. Now after this video, I suggest going back and checking out this video here, Ethereum 3,500, check out this five-year pattern. That's what we continue to come back to on this chart right here. Ethereum has put in a lot of these 23 to 25 week patterns from lows to highs and highs to breakouts. Currently, we are in about a nine-week pattern at the moment. Now, if we are to take this halfway, it's gonna get us into about mid-May. So half of those patterns are around 24 weeks is about 12 weeks and that's gonna get us into mid-May. Potentially, we'll see if we get a top there. If we do, I would love to see it at around $3,500 because that is exactly 100% of our major range that we're watching projected on top. So we get a nice price cluster and a nice time cluster. Now, if we continue going for 24 weeks, that brings us out into August. And I think we're probably going to go a little further than 3,500 should we get all the way into August with this major 24-week trend on Ethereum. And so the prices after 3,500, I'm looking for around a $5,000. I would love to see this thing go to 5K in the short term, but I think that's a little unsustainable considering the overall market as well. And if we were to almost well double, maybe just short of double from this point, 
that is now, well, that would be pumping in another $333 billion into the Ethereum market. Now, of course, it's not exactly $333 billion. It's obviously a lot less, but it's going to take out the supply. It's going to boost the price up to that point. Doing these sustained climb moves works out quite well in Ethereum's favor. So that's ideally what we're looking for here on Ethereum. Uh, so basically, you've got my ideas with terms of in terms of price and time, is it too late to be buying in now? I think it's a question you should ask yourself when you're getting these lows come in on good volume. That's the time you should be buying in. I don't like to buy in several days after it's broken the all time high yet again, especially as the volume is just starting to die off a little bit. Because the last thing you want is to buy up here and then the price just to sink back to that two and a half K level, retest those levels, wait around a little bit, and you're sort of just losing your patience in the trade. And from that point, you could possibly miss out, miss out on the next run. So the real time to ask yourself is buying in these dips as we continue up, just like we had about a week ago when we had these two massive days, Ethereum was looking very strong at that $2,000 to $2,200 level. So if you see one of those come again, just go back, recheck the charts. I'll obviously do a video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon so you can see these videos when they come out. And that could be a good time to look for another entry. So in terms of is it too late, I don't think long term it's too late. I just think be better prepared. And if you need to figure yourself out a plan, there are plenty of videos on the channel to help you set up a plan. Just go to the playlist and you'll see that in beginners playlist on how to set up a plan. Now, Ethereum BTC looking very strong. These last couple of days were very good for the pattern. We had a reversal, we had high volume, we had the market push up again. So it's starting to form another base above the 0.46 level. So should we move, move around this level for another few days, that is looking good and start to make our way up. Great. That's exactly what we want to see. We don't want to see it do what it did back here in uh, January and February, where it just spikes out and then drops. We are getting a little bit longer into this trend, but I think there's still a little bit left in this before we uh, reverse and have a little bit of a correction before we move up again. So I think ETH is still looking good, but we're possibly getting to the end of this extension of the current bull move. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with is just flipping back to Bitcoin for a moment. This may start to look like a head and shoulders to a lot of people out there. We're going to head there and this may be a shoulder. We, know, we don't know yet for sure, but I can just imagine this sort of scenario being played out in many YouTube videos or Twitter posts, people looking at a bearish scenario. So you can just imagine that whole narrative shifting quite quickly, especially as this uh, trough is lower than this trough. And that's a better setup for a head and shoulders pattern. That's what you want to see. You want to see this side break down to this side. Otherwise, you have something weaker like that and it's not really a head and shoulders at all. But again, you're going to see a lot of people try and call that a head and shoulders. So that's just something to be aware of in terms of the narrative. I think there may be some bearishness in this, which is why I am still consolidating my portfolio into major cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. I think there's still more room to grow in Ethereum. And the purpose of that is that if I am wrong and the market goes up, then I'm still exposed to Ethereum and Bitcoin. I get smaller gains, but I'm still making gains because I'm not stuck in fiat. And if the market goes against, well, if it goes in the direction that I believe it would, which would be down, then I'm not exposed to massive losses, which a lot of altcoins tend to do. Now, I don't think that's, like I said, I don't think it's 100% going to happen, but I just want to prepare myself in case it does. But I still think there's a big narrative out there for uh, DeFi, Layer 2, and Ethereum to keep pushing us through the month of May, whereas other cryptos are going to suffer while those cryptos are in the spotlight. Make sure you follow me on Twitter where you can get some updates and join us for the polls. Get your requests in for uh, different cryptos that I can cover on the technical analysis tomorrow. Join me on Instagram, daily Q&As. Check out my portfolio over on Instagram and like the video up. You know, you got to do that. Beat, beat the scammers here. Subscribe to the channel. Bell notification icon, all the good stuff. And it really does support the channel. And I thank you a hell of a lot for getting me to 125,000 subscribers on the channel. Thank you once again, guys. I'll catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.